Um, our final speaker is Andy Thayer from Gay Liberation Network and Chicago Committee Against War and Racism. This morning, the news reported another assassination attempt on President Zelensky of Ukraine, apparently by Russia. For those of us who are students of history, there was an uncanny symmetry to this. A major world power gets a beachhead on the doorstep of another major power. The other major power responds with attempted assassinations and invasion and the threat of nuclear war. That isn't to justify any of it. Anyone here, any anti-war activist worthy of the name should be totally appalled by it and not giving excuses for it. But in so many respects, Ukraine of today is Cuba of the 1960s. Every single foreign policy sin of Vladimir Putin was committed by John F. Kennedy of the United States. And it should be noted that every single one of JFK's successors has committed most, if not all, of these same sins. Since World War II, the United States has invaded more nations on Earth than any other nation around the globe. Yet who is the number one hero in the pantheon of liberal Democratic Party icons? It's JFK, the nuclear war threatening invasion and assassination organizing escalator of the Vietnam War. This should give us a clue as to who our real allies are in the fight. Not Biden and his predecessors who insisted on marching a war alliance, NATO, to the very doorstep of Russia and who clung to that policy even when it meant an almost certain Russian invasion in response. Nor is our ally, indeed he should be considered our opponent, our own saber-rattling Congressman Mike Quigley on the gravy train of defense contractor contributions who never saw a military budget increase that he didn't like. Woo! Now, in contrast to some on the right and left, we need to say that our natural allies are the brave anti-war citizens of Russia pouring out into the streets despite risk of arrest and worse. There wasn't much opposition to JFK in this country back in the day. It took a few years to, to, uh, to grow during the anti-Vietnam War movement. But that is our legacy. Those are our national al natural allies, those who oppose war in whatever country they find themselves in. A few nights ago, at Biden's State of the Union address, we saw an appalling display of US nationalism calculated to escalate the crisis. Thunderous chants of USA, USA, worthy of the very worst Trump rally. This is totally playing into Putin's hands. Any alleged support for Russian anti-war activists or Ukrainian independence couched in US patriotism, couched in US nationalism, has the effect of strengthening Putin. He is able to brand all opposition within Russia as dupes of the CIA, not unlike our own rulers attempted to do to brand the civil rights movement and opposition to the Vietnam War as being dupes of Russia. Our allies are not our own warmongers of the Democratic and Republican parties, nor their counterparts abroad. Our allies are those standing up to war. This present day is a test for the anti-war movement, one that many have already failed by excusing or ignoring the war moves of either U.S. or Russia. In this country, because we are here, it is our duty to demand, not to ask, not to lobby, not to try and convince, but to demand that the warmongers like Mike Quigley, step back from their support of this and other wars. He and his fellow Democratic and Republican Party warmongers are our opponents and should be treated as such. I'd like to finish with just a short biographical, autobiographical note. As some of you know, I visited Russia in 2009, 2010, and 2011 in support of Russian gay rights activists fighting for the right to simply assemble 
the way we are here today and demand their rights. On two occasions, I escaped the third time. On two occasions, I was arrested, along with all my other Russian counterparts and allies from abroad, for simply doing what we are doing today. And I can tell you that the response from the, the American embassy in Moscow, this was during the Obama administration, the response of the American embassy was, who cares? Because at that time, the Obama administration was cynically trying to, to court Putin and Russia as part of its plan to encircle Iran and impose its will on the people of Iran, who've been fighting for independence for decades now against the United States. That is the cynicism of great power politics. And I saw it with my own eyes. And then finally, I should say, the last time I was in Russia in 2011, we attempted to have our gay rights protest on Red Square. The day before it, a mass of Sieg-Heiling fascists gathered in that same location unmolested by the police. And it was a time when fascists in Russia would hunt and stalk on gay people and injure or murder them. It was widespread. This is not news to anyone who does the, the, the research. The point is, is that powers, whether in this country whether abroad, in Russia, Ukraine, whatever, will use fascist thugs for their own purposes. So there's a lot of fascist baiting going on in this country on both sides of the conflict. And we should be committed to allying ourselves with those who are truly against war, which is the people of Russia today who are bravely coming out and hopefully will build a movement worthy of the kind of movement that ended the Vietnam War, the U.S. war on Vietnam. That is our hope. Those are who we should be looking to as allies and not bastards like this. Thank you, Andy. Those are all of our speakers.